You're listening to the GC Collaborative Podcast, a resource for the worship arts team at Grace Church. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, <laughs> GC Collaborative Podcast. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I was so scared. I was like, Santa's here. I, I need to get my life in order before he comes and asks me if I've been good or bad all year. Well, oh, no. Luke, my son. Uh, yes. Son? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I went a little what weird What an intro. It. Welcome to the December 1st podcast yeah. from GC Collaborative. That's amazing. Yeah. I That's probably my I'd... favorite intro yet. Well, there you go, man. We've I had just some thought good I'd ones, surprise though. you. He had, yeah. He had we didn't no talk idea. about that. No. You had no idea that was coming. <laughs> I mean, I was wondering why you're wearing a Santa Claus outfit with the beard and everything when you walked in, but I just did not see that coming. <laughs> you were definitely a little oblivious. Yeah. Oh, welcome everybody to the December 1st GC Collaborative Podcast. We are so glad you're here. Yes. This is Luke Lauber and Ben Abusada, and mm. we are just here to welcome you and say, hope you're doing great out there. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Mm. Um, with the fam and everything, yeah. oh, or whatever. Cody's that at the door. Like. Should we let Cody in on this? Why not? Hold come on. on in, Cody. Come on in, Cody. Come on in, Cody. Come on in. Welcome to the podcast. If you come in, you got to say hi to the podcast. Yeah. Right here. Oh, hi, podcast. Oh man, you mm. really slammed that door too. Everybody loves wow, he's Cody. So strong. Yeah. He's actually uh, well. One, we are interviewing him next year. I think uh, in March he'll be our March first podcast. Sweet. Um, but he's also the man who is behind the scenes on this podcast. It makes us sound much better yeah. than we do. He lowers our voice a little bit, um, pitch shifts, fills it out a little bit. <laughs> hey, Cody, take the effect off real fast. Hey, hey guys, what's hey. going on? <laughs> hey, uh, Welcome to GC Cloud. So. <laughs> All right, put it, put it back on, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cody. <laughs> so it is... Uh, <laughs> let's get back on track. We're, this oh, is sorry. today. We're trying to get you on the road because it is... As we're recording this, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving, and you yeah. are actually hitting the road here. As uh, soon right as we're after done, this, yep, right after. Uh, so we're an recording eight, this. Nine hour drive to your, is it nine mm, hours? Nine to ten. Oh I stop gosh. a lot just because I want to, and what's the point of rushing? So it yeah. takes about ten. Okay. There's a lot of great, great gas stations between here and Colorado. Yeah. I feel that bad I-70, not using them. That I 70 stretch is. Oh, it's it's like a treadmill. Stretch. I call it the treadmill. It's yeah. just wheat, 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 wheat. Row of trees. Wheat, 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 wheat. <laughs> Row of trees. Small town. Wheat, 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 wheat. So it's great. Uh, listen to podcasts actually a lot. <laughs> there you go. You listen to yourself? Yeah, just listen to these over and over and just feel so great with the wind blowing in my hair. Oh it's my it's gosh. quite wonderful. I don't have to explain it to you guys. You get it. But anyways, we're so glad you're with us. Um, today we actually had the privilege of interviewing Kaylee White. She is a head of our visuals and what we do on the weekends as, as, as well as many other things, which we'll talk about in the podcast. Yeah. But uh, it was just an awesome conversation, and we are so glad and excited for you guys to hear just a little bit of the heart and passion of why we do things the way we do visually um, and lyrics and sermons and stuff like that. So we're so excited for you to hear her just talk about it. Yep. I've got nothing else to say apart right. from the fact that Kaylee is awesome. She is dynamic. She knows a lot, and she has great vision and uh, and loves doing this stuff for the church. So mm-hmm. appreciate her very much. Enjoy. All right, everybody, welcome to this month's December podcast. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Kaylee White. Kaylee, what is your job title here at Grace? Um. I don't know if I have a specific title, (laughs) but uh, I'm in the production department, um, and my emphasis is on the visual experience of the worship auditorium and across campus support as well. I like it. That's awesome. I think that's actually a good way to put it, Uh, my emphasis, because I think there is a lot of crossover for a lot of us, and so it's my emphasis is this. Well, I I learned that that in college. I, I, I majored in journalism. But my emphasis was on public relations because I was ah. not going to go into news journalism. So <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I like that. That's a good change. I like that. Well, um, so Kaylee, as she said, does a lot of the visual stuff. And um, for those of you who attend any campus at Grace, you have seen her work in some way, shape, or form. And she's also been um, in a lot of other things that you've seen as well. Um, but we wanted to interview her uh, this month just because there is so much heart and passion 
that goes into what she does. And I love talking to you because you are so passionate about the visual side of things and why you use certain elements and pictures. Um, and we, we put so many things together um, that just blow my mind. And I'm and it's always fascinating because I'm like, how does your brain work that way? And it's inspiring in all honesty. And so wanted to sit down with you, pick your brain a little bit, see where you came from. And also, um, just talk about certain projects you're working on um, yeah. and all that stuff. And so let's start with this. Where did you come from? To give us a little <laughs> bit of history of, of how you got to Grace Church. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in Texas, East Texas, and um, I met Grace Church almost 10 years ago in uh, 2011. Summer 2011 was my first visit over here um, at Grace Church. I was involved in a ministry um, a band that was a ministry, um, and we led several youth camps and concerts and church services across the nation for about four or five years, and our very first call <laughs> was a cold call to Grace Church, and somehow, <laughs> without a website, an album, a, I don't know, nothing, I mean, a phone call you guys said, yeah, we'll have you at church camp. No way. I didn't, yeah. I don't know if I know this. So yeah. how did you hear of Grace Church? Um, so we have a friend in Kansas. Okay. And we were like, hey, who do you know up there? And he said, you got to talk to Tim Howie at Grace Church. And so we said, crazy. okay, let's talk to Tim Howie at Grace Church. And, and uh, voila. Yeah, that's, it <laughs> unfolded so fast. And had they not taken a, one chance on us, I don't, we would not be here today. Yeah, so. that's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. And I mean, that was back, uh, the band formed in about 2010. Um, we formed from former bands that were um, very uh, Christian rock, and we did several festivals together. And both of these bands just said, hey, man, I, I, I know I'm like 19, 20 years old, but I really want to go tour, because that's cool. That's what the big <laughs> bands do. And we had no idea what we were doing. Hey, that's the time to do it, it honestly. It is, and we were ready to live and go, and uh-huh. and we were brave and courageous, and I don't know if I'd do it again. Like, And what did it, you play in the band? I played bass. Nice. And uh, yeah, so we had a pretty large band because it was two bands put together. Uh, these two bands said, I want to tour, and I said, yeah, we want to tour too, and then um, we were like, well, I'm scared to death to do this. Why don't we do it together? And so when we started putting the tour together, we were like, how do we, how do we book on Sundays? Do we <laughs> go to separate churches if we're riding in the same vehicle? How do we do this? And we said, well, let's just make a ministry out of this. So we, we did festivals as the two rock bands, but then on Sundays we would, we would um, do the worship band. Oh, that's awesome. And so that was our, eventually throughout that tour, God flipped our hearts from being two rock bands trying to make it and the ministry being on the side mm. to, hey, I keep booking this band. Mm-hmm. I'm making this happen. So yeah. we're like, okay, I guess we got to submit to this. This has got to be who we are. So that's who we were. We were all we are. <laughs> <laughs> Have you literally. said that a few times? Yeah, is, is literally that the first how time? it happened. Yeah. No, literally, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, you are, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but an amazing bass player. And Thank you. we get to the privilege every once in a while of having you play bass. And it always cracks me up because you're like, I never play, I never play. I and then you just come in and kill it. And it's <laughs> like, anymore. okay. I think you're secretly practicing late at night, but that's <laughs> no, okay. That's I'm the not. assumption I make. No. Um, but so when you're touring with him, from what I've understood, and this is a conversation with Ben and Jonathan, um, and they told me about it, is that you kind of started doing some of what you're doing now with them and kind of getting into yeah. that world a little bit. Unpack that for us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, not as much with the visuals, but definitely in production. We would travel with our own sound system, um, mm. and we would set it up and tear it down, and eventually we got a tiny ounce into lights. Lighting is so expensive. We had no idea what we were doing, but we wanted to provide a full experience for people that mm-hmm. if they booked us at a church camp and it was in the middle of nowhere, which Grace's was, that first camp was in the middle of nowhere. And I think that was part of the reason why the the student pastor was like, well, you know what? These guys are providing the sound system. They're willing to be camp counselors. Mm-hmm. They're willing to love all my kids. And that was our emphasis was to be the band that's not just the band mm-hmm. and yeah. to be in their lives. So I, we didn't have any visuals or anything at that point, and I wasn't working on any programs that had visuals, but I was in the production world and making events come to life with what I knew and what I had, and all I had was 
the band and um you know the 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 sound system and i would make flyers in <laughs> i would make flyers in pages on, yes. on, i was gonna say what on, programs were you yes. using back then because that's I, I had a macbook by luck you know just yep. from school and i had no idea about adobe or uh-huh. any any other extensive programs Whoa. to do any kind of design work and i don't know i was dates. layering stuff in yeah. powerpoint and yeah. all kinds of junk you know so. I can't. I was gonna say I don't remember when Adobe officially came out, but I imagine it was even harder to get a hold of back then. Oh, and, it was, yeah, because you know. it was on a disc back then. Mm, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I remember the PowerPoint days. Yeah. Oh, some good. That's actually I started in middle school running PowerPoint for the weekend service. That's how you. I got involved, and I I took that job, which everybody should. Yeah. Uh, I took it so seriously. Like sure. I just, I made sure I knew the songs. I uh-huh. made like I was all in in that in that position. And right. I don't know how good I was at it, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole experience, like planning the events and networking with people, mm-hmm. and um, getting in touch with with churches and and bringing public relations for a band and uh, agencing for a band. Um, just gave me that heart of um, creating an environment for an event to happen. Yeah, so. and that's not it's not a that's not a glamorous world as no. most people like to think it is. It's a no. it's a very it's a lot of work. It's not easy, that's for sure. Right. So, what kind of thing got you going in the direction of man? I really love this. Like, when did you kind of find that love for the production side of things? Um, and kind of start moving that direction a little bit more. Yeah, in production specifically, it was when the band stopped and I had nothing else. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, me and Kurt, um, who was on a podcast, you know, like last month, right? Would have been last yeah, month. Yeah, would have been November 1st. Very, yeah. very recently. Uh, we were, that's your husband, yeah, by the way. Yeah, he's my husband. We were, <laughs> we were in the band together. We got married. And right after, right after we got married, the band started really slowing down. And it came to a stopping point, and we had to settle down at home. And I'm like, man, I, I don't know what it's like to not tour. Mm-hmm. Um, not that we were touring constantly, but it was either I was in college or we were touring throughout yeah. the summer. And so when we settled into a church, he was like, hey, I really need you in the booth. And I was like, I don't know what to do in the booth. <laughs> and he was yep. like, but I have no one else. And so, um, so yeah, I... I became a wife. I became a helper and an aide, and I was like, "Whatever he needs, I guess I'm gonna do." So I learned Pro Presenter, and I learned how to how to work with Adobe Premiere and and After Effects. It slowly trickled in over the years, but it grew from him going, "Hey, I don't have anybody to run lyrics," and it was so simple yeah. as, as running lyrics for the first time in my life, right yeah. then. So, but I think that also uh, it continues in the spirit that you have today. Because I remember even. You know, last I think it was Christmas. You were working on something, and you were like, "I've never used this program before in my life." But really, you know, yes, <laughs> I'm figuring it out. And yeah. I thought that was so cool because, like, so many people, it's hard when you get to a certain place. I think to uh, continue to be able to learn sometimes, right? Um, because you feel like I have to know it all and put off that persona. Yeah. But I just remember in that moment, I was like, "Ah, oh, so cool that she's just like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going yeah. to figure it out. And you did, and it was awesome. And I remember, you know, seeing the final product and was like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I would have never guessed she didn't know what she was I, doing. <laughs> I, really, I really am dappling in everything. And it's, it's a hard balance because I'm an Enneagram 8. And so I'm very much a passionate pursuer mm-hmm. and, and pioneering myself through things, but I only really want to um, tackle it if I know it's going to be successful. And sometimes I don't know that. And I have to dial that back and just go, Hey, if you don't try it, you're never going to get anywhere. So, yeah, no, that's... So I'm, it's a balance, for I sure. I think it's an amazing thing, because, uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of people, that just it, you get to a level where it's like, you know, stop stop trying things, stop, you know, advancing right. and, and, yeah. and trying new things. And it's like, this is what I know, this is what I'm great at, this is what <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stick to. And so it's hard, it's hard to go into that, you know, new space sometimes. Um, but that's awesome. So you guys started in production, doing it there and then how did you was that the church you were at before you came to grace it was two churches ago but um yeah we were in a very small church um just started running lyrics but i that was the first time i really ran pro presenter and i started making things intentional because i because i came from music i was able to bring an intentional intentionality to the visuals of of how we storytell music Mm -hmm. through lyrics on the screen and 
some people are visual learners. We and some people aren't into music, but they'll sit and listen, you know, or they won't understand the intricacies of guitar lead lines or um, orchestrations that are that are pushing behind the band. But if they see something, they might get inspired. And yeah. Same thing with I mean Hollywood it, people who push back on that. It's and they're like, oh, we just we don't need any of that stuff. I'm like, well, Hollywood needs it to tell their story. Why can't Why can't Jesus tell his story like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so that brings me into what I, I really honestly want to pick your brain about, talk to you about, because I think it is so cool, is the passion and the heart that you have in the storytelling of songs. Um, the most recent one that I'm thinking of that I saw that you did was Egypt mm-hmm. and um, just the visuals for that. And um, and I just want to unpack that. Just give me some of your heart, your thought process behind those things, because I think it's evident, but just in case people don't know, <laughs> um, <laughs> right. those aren't just thrown together. Um, you know, you put a lot of thought into those things with worship, and even the sermon stuff. You you help yeah. out with with Tim and the um, other speakers um, when they give when they have stuff up on the screen. You guys really put a lot of intentionality behind that, um, and I think. Uh, to, to what you said earlier, is you are an amazing visual storyteller. And I think it's always fun to see what you come up with with each song because it is so, uh, it is a story being unfolded. Yeah. And I remember, I think I, the first time I remember seeing it, it could have been before this, but the first time I remember seeing it was last Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just was sitting there and I was like, this is like, on its own without words or anything. It's a story being told with uh, the, the symphony that Kurt put together, the right. visuals that you put together. Um, and so I just love to hear, like, what's your thought process behind that? How, where do you start? How do you go about it? Um, and you can be honest and say, there is no problem. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Well, it's, it is overwhelming because starting is the most, is the hardest part for me. And mm-hmm. um, I'm usually hung up before I start. You know what I mean? Um, I'm usually, I don't know where to begin. And, and just you, you just get overwhelmed. And I'm a task person. And so if there's a lot of things on the to-do list, even if they take five minutes each to do, I'm mm-hmm. going to be overwhelmed because there's five things on there. Yeah. It's not just like two. Or I'm not confident on how I'll get started on those, even if it's something so small. Yeah. And so... Um, once the, once it gets rolling, it's so good. Like, you, you know, this in music writing, like, like once you get bones, you can really start rolling with it. Yeah. But, um, for me, it's, it's sitting down and, and knowing one, what, what am I working with? What song am I working with? What pieces instrumentally are, are in that song? Um, and not just that, what does the band look like? Cause if the stage is empty, Mm-hmm. Maybe it's sh- maybe the screen shouldn't be full, or maybe there the screen really should be full, and it should be a, a balance. Like because the emphasis isn't on the band and the amount of people on stage, maybe the focus should be on the screen. And so it's it's not just throwing colors together mm-hmm. or finding the, the correct palette or um, the right visual or the the elements. You know, it's it's taking to effect, uh, taking taking those things um, thought for the audience and the season and the series even back mm-hmm. back to um we were in the all in series and we talked about Joshua and we talked about Egypt and and when I think about Egypt I think about going from the desert and into the green grass into mm-hmm. the green mountains into the promised land and I'm just I'm just painting that visually of um of what that would look like. And so I, I've been to Israel. I took the mountains of Israel and I was like, Hey, the hills of dirt, let's do it. And let's Mm -hmm. go into the promised land of, of all this green. Um, it reminded me, um, I've been, I will call it Shiloh. That's the proper way to say Shiloh. It is Shiloh. I remember going to Israel when I was, um, first married, uh, with Kurt, We, we were newlyweds and we went to Israel and Israel, if you haven't been, um, it is a touristy place. I mean, there's it's definitely desert, but there are tour buses everywhere because mm-hmm. everybody wants to come see Israel, whether it's for school and education or if it's the Catholic Church or if it's the non-denominational church. It's a lot of people coming to just see what this history is, right? Yeah. And so we went to all these places in the city of David and the Garden of Gethsemane and all these people are here. And they said, hey, we're going to get on the bus and we're going to go to Shiloh. And I was like, why are we going to Shiloh? What's there? And we hop on this bus and we take oh off. Oh, my gosh. There are two tour buses and we're driving. And I'm like, no one's on these roads. Where is everybody? I'm like, there's no, 
and eventually you're out of the city. There is just dirt, dirt hills, mm. no water, yeah, no plants, no greenery whatsoever. And I'm like, where are we? Hello. <laughs> and it's been two hours. Israel's tiny, you know, like it's tiny. And I'm like, where are we going? And we top this hill and it's just green hills. It's, really? it's Sheila. It's and it was just like going into the promised land. It's it's green hills of, of vineyards, oh, wow. the most perfect, beautiful wine that you could ever imagine. And they, they're they prideful on that. Yeah. They pride themselves on that. And I was like, oh my gosh. And they were like, yeah, nobody really comes here. And I'm like, I'm so glad we came here. But on the journey, I was like, this is rough. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so I, I, with Egypt, I wanted to paint that type of picture but i but i am my worst critic i'm i'm hard on myself and it's hard to get going it's hard it's easy to get stuck Mm -hmm. um but i have to remind myself that um everything that we see on earth everything that we experience here with our day-to-day life is like a glimpse looking into his glory and He's use he's letting us use those experiences, yeah. those interactions, um, to give us a taste of what what glory is. And so, if you take what you know and put it on the screen, then you can't go wrong because it's what God's given you. You can't just reach for random stuff. You yeah. can't just throw it up on the screen. It's got to be intentional. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Um, gosh, there's so much in there. I was like, where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that's. So important because even yesterday, walk in. Yeah, I thought that I was actually joking with you before the podcast started. <laughs> of uh, I walked in and you were working on Christmas and um, and you were just like, I got nothing. I don't know where to start with this song. I yep. don't know what to do. Uh, and then you even said, I don't think we should do the podcast tomorrow because I'm not in a good spot. <laughs> and I go, actually, I think we should do the podcast yeah. tomorrow because I'd love to capture. Because uh, last podcast, we did talk about the valleys of just feeling stuck. And I was like, it'd be kind of cool to um, get you in that spot and talk to you. It's not and pretty. And then to my demise, <laughs> you got out of it today. I did. So. <laughs> I got out of it this morning. <laughs> so I was like, no. No, just kidding. Uh, it's awesome that uh, But I was. I was very stuck yesterday. And I am a bad critic on myself but i'm just like you know i have to remind myself like everything that i've seen and experienced is is hinting to his glory Mm. you have to just remember the know what you know and go with what you know i'm never going to have it all or fully experience the perfect way to put this on the screen until i meet him face to face so i just gotta i just gotta go with what i know and it'll be more relatable that way right like when someone sees something on screen and it's like too too good to behold Mm -hmm. it's that's a that's a big statement piece but it's but it also might not be relatable to everybody that's in the crowd yeah so for right now we're just sketching like it's not a masterpiece yet but we're just sketching Mm -hmm. anything that we do we could sit down for hours and tear apart pieces of visuals or songs or pieces of production and we'll never get there we're just sketching oh yeah i think that's such a, a good way to put it is i think there's always um, there will always be something that's a mistake. Right. You know, that's what makes it human. And, yeah. um, and I think the people who want to find the mistakes will find them. Um, and then the people that want to enjoy will enjoy and yeah. just, you know, um, yeah, just enjoy it. So, um, now tell me if you don't mind, if this is like too personal, I totally right. get it. But like in that moment, like what goes through your head when you're sitting there and you're like, I'm stuck. Uh, cause some people I know, and I'll just throw out things that I've heard is for some people it's you get in this place of I'm stuck and I'm never going to make something as good as the last thing I made and I'm just stuck and this is it this is the end of the road I've got no right. other good ideas like I'm done and because that's that's the thing to me creativity is such an elusive like crazy thing because it it's is. like you can't make an idea come into your head right. I wish I could yeah. it'd be awesome my life would be so much easier <laughs> exactly yeah. but it's that feeling of like God please help an idea come please yeah right yeah <laughs> But for you, what goes through, like yesterday, what goes through your head Man. when you're stuck in that moment and you're just like, uh, you know, and I, and if I'm okay to share this, yeah. I can cut it out if you're if you're not okay with it. But like, <laughs> I walk in, you're obviously like slouched in the chair, yeah, I'm gone. distraught, uh, you know, and I'm the exact same way. You know, you're like, I don't have anything. I don't know what I'm going to do. Right. You know, you even said, I don't know if I want to do the podcast. Or yeah. <laughs> uh, but what's going through your uh, head in those moments? Cause... Yeah, so I I am such a get it done 
a go-getter, get it done. And whenever there's a deadline on the table, I want to hit it. And sometimes we don't, and it's okay. But mm-hmm. that's why I put the deadline so early, <laughs> so mm-hmm. that we can re- reassess things if we have to, to, you know, to take another look at it, a second look at it. But um, the competitive eight in me wants to be done. Mm-hmm. and but But the creative part of me wants it to be really good. And take time and have patience, but I'm not naturally that way at yeah. all. And so, what goes through my head? It's it's a wave of emotions for sure. I mean, you, you go through it. At first, you walk away. You're like, it's fine. It's it's gonna be fine. And then an hour goes by, and you're like, things aren't fine. <laughs> things aren't fine. Right. They're not looking up. Mm. Nothing's come. God, are you gonna come through? <laughs> like, I need you because I'm not creative anymore. Uh-huh. Um, and so it's it's. It's a wreck, you know. <laughs> Yesterday, I was an absolute wreck. I, I went through hours, and then you just are mad at yourself because yep. yesterday, the day before, was my day off. And uh-huh. I'm just like, I took that day off. And I didn't even enjoy that day off because all I was doing was stressing about today, and now I'm here, and I am so upset because oh, I have nothing. I it. Yeah. And it was yesterday. I've It's such a big project. Yeah. If it was a weekend thing, it's it's still a big thing. And it's still someone's experience, and it could be someone's first time, and that those all really matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the intentionality behind Christmas, every single visual, every single color scheme, and and when things come into the picture and out of the picture, every bit matters. Mm-hmm. Every font choice matters. Every everything, however, I can clearly tell the story of Jesus matters. And so, with this much pressure, it, I felt nothing. Hmm. That's literally all I can say. I felt <laughs> I felt so empty. Yeah. And I was like, I don't even know if a day off would, would help me at this point because of my task to-do list, I, all I could think about would be, I don't have that song done. Yeah. And so I put a lot of pressure on myself to, to put it done, put it, get it done and hmm. to put everything else aside and, and make it happen. But I know health health wise i can't do that my mind can't handle that i can't just keep grinding until it's done yeah there are seasons for that but not something like this i think god wanted me to to go sleep on it and so i did yeah and i came back and i was ready to go (laughs) yeah it's crazy how that could happen though you know because your natural instinct is to just keep pushing like put your head down keep pushing forward when in reality the best thing is is to step away and just Take that breath and, yeah. you know, refocus in a way. Um, and then it's crazy how God and the brain just, boom, you know, right. here's the thought that you've been wanting and waiting for. Um, no, I think that's so good because I think, you know, a lot of people, including myself, can can look at what you do and it's like, oh, they just know exactly what they're going to do. They just go right. in and do it. Um, they execute it, uh, you know, well and fast and and Mm -hmm. it's hard to believe sometimes that people struggle to to create something because you know um so i think it demystifies it a little bit of like oh no we all walk through that and and have to figure that out when it happens um which is awesome right so um but in and in that line too and you kind of talked about this a little bit earlier I think I can't remember if we were talking on the podcast or just beforehand. <laughs> so, so all coming blurring in my mind right now. But what I really want to talk about too, um, because I think we do have to do this. You did talk about it with movies in Hollywood. Yeah, um, yeah. Is you know sometimes, um, and I want to phrase this well, um, but sometimes in the Christian world. It can be seen as anything production-wise is not needed, um, mm-hmm. or we're taking away from the uh, people focusing on God because we have a screen, we have lights, right. um, and and that can kind of be the thought process. Um, and so I just want to hear because I once again when when you talk about this, when you and Jonathan and and Cody and all and, and all the production people talk about this. I always think it's awesome because I think if we get stuck sometimes in that frame of mind, we can miss out on so much. And obviously, like anything, you can use it to take glory away from God, obviously. Right, for sure. Um, but at the same time, you can use it to give glory to God. Right. And, There's a um, balance, for sure. Oh, absolutely. And I think, but the way you guys think of it, I just think is amazing and so inspiring. And so I'd love for you to just kind of unpack that because I think sometimes people do come in with, why do we need this? What's the point? Is God not enough? Right, Um, exactly. And so I'd love for you to just unpack your your awesome thoughts on that because I always (laughs) love it when you talk about it. Yeah. um, 
Well, when I when I first got to Grace, um, we weren't using very many visuals for worship motion backgrounds, or really too much as far as uh, pastoral notes go. Yeah. Not, not mm-hmm. very many visuals were were taken um, up on that on that stage, and that's just where I am naturally. I gravitate to that stuff, and yeah. if if God wired me that way, I feel I feel fully one hundred percent bought in that this is what God wants me to do. Mm. And so I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And if people understand that or not, it's it's that's a fine line to walk for sure because there are people who don't understand it. Yeah. People who th- who think on the other side of their brain or they or they just are are simple. I just want the simple stuff and I love that stuff too. It's mm-hmm. all good. It's all at the heart and the meat of what we're what we're all striving to do. Yeah. Um we're definitely not adding anything to um to the word or to god Mm -hmm. um we're using what we have and leveraging every every element that we have to praise him and sometimes we do turn off the wall yeah sometimes we do delete the backgrounds and just do text Mm -hmm. and sometimes we don't you know sometimes the lights are still and sometimes they're moving yeah and so um it's we're not doing it to spend money we're not doing it to look cool and um we're not doing it for for just no reason we're doing it to aid what's happening on stage what what song is playing what that emotion is bringing from that song because we've sat and we've listened to the set list and we've sat and we've heard the band that you guys have on stage and the style that you're going for is it going to be folky or are you doing a full out um contemporary worship band or are you doing acoustic are you mm-hmm. dialing down is it going to be orchestrated and we play into those um, things uh, with our visuals, our audio, and our lighting. Everything plays together, um, working on the same team. And uh, but when I first got here, we weren't doing much at all. Yeah. Um, we had a single background, and and I mean there are smaller churches that that do this as well. And that's where I started. You put a background on the start of the song, and you're like, okay, this one's blue, that one's pink, and that one's orange. Yeah. Great. We're absolutely. done. And I've got this one text font everything is readable and that's great and i'm like yeah but when i started digging into just even so something so simple as pro presenter i was like man each when i started designing outside of pro presenter as as a graphic artist because i was communications director before i was like i'm picking fonts for a very specific reason i started really looking at the way people are are shooting movies and the color grading that they're using Mm -hmm. for that movie and that mood and that scene and um why they chose that font and that color palette. And I was like, we could do this in worship. Why yeah. are we not doing this in worship? Yeah, I'm at an 80-person church, so this is small steps to having um, what I would consider an excellent worship service. Yeah, um, Things that are working together and not against each other, and they're not just thrown up on the wall just to be there. Um, yeah. And so I just wanted... To, it's nothing special of me, but when I came in, I wanted to take intentional time to focus on those things. Nobody was doing it. It's not mm-hmm. that they didn't care, because I, I know Jonathan cared. He just, there was other people on the team, and, and no one was giving focus to that, because they had focus in so many other places, because yeah. it's hard to run production, and yeah. we didn't have a third team member yet, yep. and I was it. I was the yeah. third team member. When I came in, I was able to give focus on that. Um, and uh, offending people with a visual... Or, or people under misunderstanding is inevitable. Someone's going to misunderstand. Yeah. And someone might get offended. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it is. It's like I said, it's a fine line to, to walk. But, and, and, and because creativity is subjective mm-hmm. and people, everybody's going to have an opinion on it, it's, it's very difficult to navigate. But our overall goal is to just, as long as we're painting a clear picture of Jesus and hope and the message that we, we see that's happening through the series or through the song or through that set list and because of the style of the band or, or whatever it is, then we've we've achieved something. Yeah. And um and if people have questions or if they, they do have pushback on, oh, why did you use this or why is it flashing or why is it this or that, I'm glad they're asking because it shows that they're watching. Yeah. It shows that they're intentional mm-hmm. and it shows, why can't we just go back to God? And I'm like, that's so awesome. Like, thank you. One, thank you for reminding me that maybe, maybe the service was too flashy because yeah. I'm not perfect. Oh, Our production team's not perfect. Yeah. 
And so I'm like, wow, maybe we should dial down the flash Mm -hmm. or maybe we should um, do it this way or that way. And I, I mean, Everybody's going to fill fill out a comment card at one point or time, and it's it's not a bad thing. We yeah. all feedback is good feedback. It depends on how you receive it. Yeah, and so it really just depends on um, on what is said and and how to navigate that. Yeah, and I think you bring up a good point because I mean we are all human doing these things, and even as as a musician right. and leading worship, sometimes it's like your whether we like it or not, our your humanity comes into play and, and pride and, and selfishness and, and as much as we'd like to admit that that's not a thing, yeah, it yeah. is a reality. And um, and we've talked about it before on other podcasts, but uh, just how to handle that and how to how to walk through that. Um, but I think that's a good point of just realizing there are times where we might go too far or we might not go far enough or, right. you know, um, but that's the human nature of walking and figuring it out. Exactly. And, and community too of, of walking through that and, and growing together as artists and stuff um, and having those conversations. Cause I think that's the coolest thing um, always is to have those conversations because I grew up in a world where if you even admitted that you had pride, it yeah. was like, shame on you, leave, right. you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> that is not good, leave. Um, but to be able to have those conversations um, is amazing. So how do you know, like then, or, or do you have a process of, because you, you do naturally, I think, in the arts world and visually push limits every once in a while. Right. Um, and I, and I don't, I, I I won't speak for you, but I don't think your intention is, oh, let's push the limit. But you just naturally do as you're growing, as you're watching stuff, bringing it in. Um, How do you navigate even just that of, um, you know, maybe there are there moments where it's like, ah, let's push the limit just a little bit here and see what happens or what's kind of the thought process behind that? Or do you just create it? And if it's offensive, we'll figure it out (laughs) as we go. I, I, I say that very like matter of factly and right. I know that's not the case but um, but is there any thought with that or what kind of goes through your head when you're making stuff is it like ah this might be offensive should I put it in there and try or is it just like yeah. nope I'm just creating and you know most of it I don't I hate saying it this way but it is just creating if I yeah. feel that the song is I, so people need to realize that the production team worships yeah. we, we sit down and we listen to the set list and we feel out the series and we see what the communications team has come up with for the graphic design and the feel. And we go, man, this is a moody series. Back uh, earlier this year, we had a series on depression. Mm -hmm. This is a moody series. We need to make sure that we aren't pushing too hard into other elements because we want to make sure we keep the audience right here in this feel. And so um, that's all intentional. And so, but sometimes it is, well, we'll just create the songs calling for it. Like, I'm going to sit here and worship this song, uh, mm-hmm. worship w- along with this song and, and listen to the words and key in on the instrumentation and, and f- feel what this song is trying to portray and try to put it visually on the screen. And if it offends someone, I hate that, but I'm, I'm glad that, that they're tapping into um, the visuals and going, man, uh, they're asking questions and, and maybe they're wrestling with something because the gospel's offensive. Yeah, you know what I mean? Absolutely. If it's yeah, not absolutely. offensive, then we would not get saved. You yeah. Know? We wouldn't, we wouldn't want to repent if mm-hmm. it wasn't so offensive to our, to our sinful nature. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So That's I'm a, not that we're right and they're wrong, but it's sometimes if a song calls for it, I remember back in high school and middle school or high school and college when I used to listen to metal music and my mom was like, I don't understand why this is good music. <laughs> and I was like, Mom, they're worshiping. And she's like, no, they're not. And I was like, I would read her lyrics, and she'd be like, they're saying that? And I said, yeah, <laughs> it's like the most powerful <laughs> lyrics I've That's ever awesome. heard in my life. She goes, but, she, but he's screaming. And she didn't understand. Yeah. She's not an eight. And I'm like, there's passion <laughs> in screaming. She's not an eight. You don't get the screaming because you're yeah, not an eight. There's, there's passion oh in screaming. Gosh, he's he's excited. He is, he is worshiping. And so sometimes it might look like the visuals are screaming at you. Yeah, you, but absolutely. it's it's trying to portray something. It all has a meaning. Oh right? yeah, so. and I think you guys just do such an amazing job. And I told Jonathan in that his podcast, but it's it's really cool. Um, and I want to get to Christmas. Uh, we got yeah. about five minutes because I know you got to go pick up your daughter. <laughs> uh, but I want to get to Christmas here in a second. Before we do, um, I just think it's so amazing um, because you guys do read the room really we well, yeah. um, and I love it. Um, and 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 you take, you know music and sets and you just bring them alive visually which i think is so beautiful and right. um and i've loved 
seeing you take the visual side of things to a whole new level because like you said before you got here there wasn't a whole lot of it um, right and we had one standard font and mm-hmm. one motion background per song absolutely and something so small if if there's small churches that are listening and they're like i just haven't we don't have adobe suite or premiere mm-hmm. i started by just adding a second motion background to the chorus of every song yeah because because a song changes right it yeah. has ebbs and flows and it has high points and low points and if you're able to read the song then then you can create an amazing worship experience visually yeah, yeah. absolutely um no i love it i think it's i i love just sitting there and watching and, and listening and just seeing what you guys are doing and watching it back even from the weekend or the live stream um, or well recordings now um, and just seeing what you guys are doing and, and it just it inspires me I think as well and that's the cool thing too is the I think it's the circle of inspiration if right, you will yeah. of and oh we're my playing gosh. off of each other yeah you know, we're absolutely. all creatives in this world so okay so I'm gonna do a hard cut here let's do it let's do <laughs> to it to Christmas because I think it'd be so cool because you guys are like we've talked about working hard on Christmas. Um, Give us some of the insight because I know you guys are working with communications, taking graphics, taking things that were used that's going to be in the story video to put in the video to mesh everything together. Give us some of the heart as because what I'd love for is when people see Christmas Eve, they kind of understand the background of what's going on because you guys have put so much heart and passion and love into this. I know you're in the middle of it too. Yeah, Um, I am. But just to kind of give some insight to our fellow creatives and artists that are listening to this, um, just what's going on because I think it would be really awesome to hear that and then go in and see and be like oh my gosh you talked yeah, about this at least yeah. i geek out on that so for sure <laughs> yeah um so we've got uh three different songs this christmas and one of them is a, a full original complete from start to finish a couple of them are little mashups and medleys but um one is a full original and uh we've we've been working closely with the communications team to take their elements and their vibe their color palette and make sure that it it continues throughout the Christmas worship experience from the stage design to the visuals to the lighting design. Um, and then obviously Cody does magic on audio and it all really fits this warm, um, radiant glow of a feeling. It's, it's very majestic. It's not overwhelming cause mm-hmm. he's just, it's just baby Jesus. And mm-hmm. you just feel like this golden glow. And, mm-hmm. um, they can see that in the music videos that we've, we've been working on, um, that the film crew has been working on for, um, our online services. And we're going to take some of those elements and put them on the stage so mm-hmm. that we can have a, have the feel, the feel of online as close as we can to live. Cause we want it to feel like one service and one church with one, cause we do have one hope and one mission. And, we want it to feel the same. Yeah. Uh, like you didn't miss anything if you stayed at home, but you also didn't miss anything if you came to church because mm-hmm. uh, this is a weird season right now. And we want to make sure that, that everything is coinciding. And so what we've done this year is um, our graphics designer has, has hand-drawn a lot of this uh, Christmas graphic for this year. And I've taken those hand-drawn elements and we've, We've thrown them into After Effects. We've animated them just a little bit. um, And we've kept that kind of gold, warm, um, glowing color with Mm -hmm. it. And uh, created a lyric video for No Other King. Uh, We wanted to take it a little step further because um, we wanted everything to be custom for this lyric video. Since it is Mm -hmm. a full original song. And we have... um, someone on staff who isn't even part of GC collab until now (laughs) she's in our HR department and she's very good at scripting fonts. And I was like, why right when I got here, I was like, why have we not used her? And I've held on to this for a year and a half. And I'm like, now's the time we have to pull her in. And so we pulled her in and she hand scripted the whole song of no other King. And, um, so this one is going to be, absolutely 100 percent original from gc collaborative yeah heck yeah um and then yeah so you've taken two so we have this nativity scene that we're using um for the story part of the video and then shauna who does our graphics took that uh I don't even know what she did, but right. she brought it into the digital world. <laughs> yeah, she took she virtu- basically she she took pictures of our nativity set, which was from the Willow Tree 
collection, and she hand traced those and drew them as as she could. Um, and then she ended up. I wanted more elements, yeah. and I was like, "Hey, I don't know how good you are. Like, I I, I hate asking so much of you, but you've done so well with these. Yeah, you're so can good. You, can you do more? Can you make?" more of these like and i gave her i was like can you draw these these few elements i want a crown i don't have a crown i would love a crown and those same elements i would love a cross and those same elements and and i would love a manger a real cradle Mm. and i I really need those to story tell this and she drew them um and so we're animating those this week and um getting started on the on the lyric video for that so not only will we have a music video by the end of this we'll also have a completely customized uh lyric video as well so cool. Well, I uh, am excited to see it all. I've seen bits and pieces of it throughout, but I'm excited to see it all come together. I'm excited for people to see it. And I know um, everybody's heart on the team that has been involved, which has been, I think, honestly, all things considered, all campuses considered, even by the time Christmas Eve hits, it's hundreds of people um, right, involved yeah. in it, collaborating, doing stuff. i um, just excited to see it all come together. And I will let you go because I know yeah. you have to go. Um, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. Seriously, uh, it's just so awesome always to talk to you about this stuff. And it's a world that... I feel like I don't know much about, but I'm continually hey, learning from I don't either. Um, Every time I sit you. down, I'm learning something <laughs> at that thing. But I love it. I love it. It's endless, I think, you know. I think that's the beauty, and we've yeah. talked about this too as well, is the continual learning that goes on around here and the, and the right. freedom of, of not feeling like we have to be perfect or um, experts. I absolutely am not. Like, I, I'm not even really an animator. I'm learning, yeah. you know, and I'm taking the elements that we've made and yeah. It's really more credit to Shauna than it is to me to, for oh, the graphics, yeah. and uh, I'm, uh, I'm throwing uh, them in uh, there and hoping <laughs> that it works. For the rest of most of our graphics up until this point on the motions have just been taking what elements and resources are out there mm-hmm. and mashing them together to help create the story that we want to tell. Because sometimes stories are out there. Yeah, animators have made beautiful things, mm-hmm. a lot and of I'm stuff. like, it's so close to my story. Let me just clip it up a little bit mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> to absolutely. help tell our story. And um, we do that in the live experience most of the time. But I'm really excited for No Other King since it's going to oh, be yeah. fully customized. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's cool. It's a it's a whole new world, yeah, a whole new frontier, which is so cool to me um, that you guys are doing that and trying it. And so I'm excited to see how it all turns out. I know it's going to be awesome. So thank you seriously so much. Uh, yeah. I always throw this out there. I think I do sometimes. I forget but social media or anything anywhere anybody can follow you if you want them to if you're not and you're like don't follow me please don't um <laughs> i always try to give a little shout out at the end and then we'll be done anything at yeah, all yeah uh, i'm on instagram i am uh kaylee creative oh, um no. kaylee underscore creative like it that's about it <laughs> all right that's hey that's more than i got i think so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Kaylee. And thank you guys for listening and hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, love you guys. Well, I can't wait to listen to uh, what she actually says uh, because I haven't had a chance to listen. I'm not going to lie to the people and say that I listened. But You had one job, Ben. You're supposed to lie <laughs> and say that you listened to it already. <laughs> uh, but uh, all I know is that uh, that I, I if I'm, I'm guessing what she has said, she has uh, shared her heart and her passion for visuals. And, you know, I think a lot of times people, just like what Jonathan talked about in the first episode and, mm-hmm. you know, the other guys talked about in the last one, you know, just talking about the visual impact and is that as a part of worship. You know, I think people oftentimes forget about that aspect of what we do as a church. And, uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's very cool for us to be able to, to sit down with these, these folks and uh, hear their hearts. Yeah, and it's just cool to hear how they just worship so much through it, you know, and that's always the cool thing, too, is they're worshiping just as much as anybody else when they're putting that stuff together, and um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, well, do we have any announcements, any news that we need to talk about before we get going? Absolutely. A couple things just to let people know, uh, if you've made it this far into the podcast, hopefully they have. No, they definitely Uh, have. (laughs) (laughs) Or they don't stop whenever they hear us come on at the end. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, this is just boring stuff. Next. (laughs) So uh, don't forget that all of the brick-and-mortar campuses, we are not meeting at our buildings the weekend after Christmas. I can't remember those dates, 20, 26, 27, or 27, I think it's 20, 20 like yeah, 20, Christmas yeah. is on Friday, so yes. 20, 26, 27. Okay, yep. so yeah, so we're not meeting in the buildings, but uh, uh, we will be rebroadcasting our Christmas service online that we did uh, on the 24th, uh, mm. all weekend that weekend. So 
uh, be sure to jump on and, and catch that. And I think that's pretty much it. We're... That is it. As always, if you guys can accept or decline your planning center mm. invites, that's always a huge, huge, huge blessing. Um, the earlier, the better, um, in all honesty. And uh, we just love you guys. We hope you have a great Christmas. Uh, we will not be talking to you till January 1st. So have a great Christmas, a great New Year's. We're so grateful for you guys. We think it's been an amazing year, yeah. um, in all honesty, as far as just obviously the world's gone little crazy here and there, but you guys and the church has just been awesome and stepped up to the plate mm-hmm. and just really come through, and we're just grateful to be a part of it and grateful that you guys are a part of it too. So, Cody, you got anything to add? No. How about how about Cody? Can you take off the effects of our voices so we can end just just as we are? You know, like let's not hide, hide behind, and go. Thank you guys so much for listening. Merry <laughs> Christmas, everybody. <laughs> How did you get a Santa oh, voice? Oh, oh, oh. That's not... Ah, thank you guys. Later, Have a guys. good one. Thanks for listening to the GC Collaborative Podcast. If you have any questions or would like more information, check us out at visitgracechurch.com. <laughs>